friends, thank you for coming back. This is Diana with Creativity Inc. And today in my cave, as every video, I try to share with you my lucky finds. I found these two little tiny cutest thing, uh, vintage uh, casters and the staple that my husband gifted me. I love this man and he gave me this awesome, awesome sticker. Anyways, as today, as you guys probably saw in the video, I'm making this like swivel door kind of doohickey out of um they're vintage rulers they're like rulers that like stand out like a zigzag and i like the fact that it swivels out so like i, I wanted to use it as a window swiveler thing or doohickey mikey so i start off by you know using a recycled um or a not usable journal anymore that my daughter threw away in the trash so i'm using the lid uh, one of the covers, I think it was front cover, I don't know, um, and it's a wine spiral notebook and so I cut it in half and actually in three pieces, no in half because of the center piece is made out of another piece of extra cardboard that I had. Anyway, so in order for me to frame the window that's going to be attached to the, the top swiveling part of the, uh, the ruler, I'm going to frame the bottom and the top so it kind of looks layered and busy and, and it doesn't I don't want it to look like there's something there that most I want it to be kind of like surprise this is what my notebook does so uh, I'm gonna make it I want to make it a little busy a little distracting so that you really don't know that there is a what's it called a swivel or a moving part you guys know what I mean I don't know I like I like my journals to be like Oh, that's so cool! Kind of attitude. Anywho, I'm making a. I made. I already did on the front cover. I cut out halfway through uh, the thickness of the board. I cut halfway through uh, the shape of the ruler that goes on the bottom, like the base part of it, so that when I move the part, it has. It's like it stays put because if I just simply glue it with the movement, with the pressure and all that stuff it's gonna eventually fall off so you wanna dig into it in there so that there's um, so it stays put kind of thing so as you guys are about to see this is my first mistake I'm already glued down and like I barely started preparing my parts and putting all my my elements together and I'm already thinking of gluing just because you know what I just got this glue and it says it's like awesome um, super hard glue it's like even flammable that's how you know it's gonna be hard. <laughs> well that's what I thought right anyways that's why I noticed that um, I still haven't done like all these doohickeys that I want to do to the window and I want to attach, attach all these parts so I go uh, my next step is to make the second window uh, the first um, cutout is for the ruler. The second cutout is for the window. So the window is going to be um, acetate piece, of course, because it's going to be like a window doohickey. So the way I'm going to attach it um, is going to be with um, oh, man, what are these paper clip thingies? Um, you know, I'm going to forget everything at the moment I'm shooting, right? I know it as I'm using it, and then when I'm like not using it I'm gonna forget everything so I think they're called paper paper like fasteners I don't know anyways so because the the space between both ruler parts is so thin um, it's hard for me to really um, use much like a glue or um, anything that stick so I I have to make something that can be uh, durable and at the same time thin enough so I thought about acetate and then I can attach whatever I want to the acetate on top of it so I'm attaching the this little like rug board rug cardboard sorry <laughs> oh, anyway. um, so I'm gonna attach this to that this to that the cardboard to the acetate um, but before I do that, I want some of it to kind of go under, so I'm thinning it out as much as I can in order to to kind of tuck it in there. So the whole point of me using the acetate is that it slides and it's, it doesn't get like caught in any of the moving parts. So I, I put a sliding 
acetate and it covers the whole bottom, right? And I'm also using those fasteners because um, I can make them thinner because, you know, they're super thin on the bottom. So I can make them super thin. But at the same time, acetate is, is, is really hard for you to glue it down and, and no matter where it won't come off. So I'm, I drilled a hole on the top ruler and I made a hole. I transferred those hole spots to the acetate so that I can use the paper fasteners. And um, I did put a little bit of glue, as you guys will see. But I think that the strength comes from, and the durability comes really from the using those paper fasteners that uh, strengthens the bond and it makes it not so movable. Plus, I think it will add on uh, some charm kind of in a way to it. Where it's like standing out, I just it doesn't look like just a stick of like paper stuck to a ruler. You know what I mean? You want it to see like things make sense. You want to make art, but in my head, things have to make sense. Anyways, this is my so-called window. So um, after I cut out kind of like a hole on the on this cardboard, I used um, coffee paper and um, that clothing dye um, mixture that I have. And um, I don't have it prepared like that, but I have the dye in a, in a bottle, like in a dropper. And um, I also sometimes put some of, of the ink. I have a, an equipment uh, at work that, I, that we use a machine, and it, it, ha it, it pops in this, like, when it cleans its heads, it pops in like this um, ink that's kind of like a mixture of all the colors. So I use that as well, and it gives me this, uh, it's, it's a brownish, but it's also like a blackish, bluish, I don't know. It's a, a, You can tell it has different colors. So, uh, But because sometimes I put uh, that dye stronger. See, I mix it on my little plate that I have there by my side, and it just depends how I'm kind of feeling that day. So sometimes I'll put more of that ink. And sometimes I'll put more of the dye from the clothing, and um, and it just makes that that um, that bond. And so here I am. Um, I don't know what I was thinking at this time, but I feel like I just wanted window, and I think it should have the window should have only been on the top part. But I was caught in a roller coaster of let's make windows. So I also decided to make the window on my base. See, I don't know the point of my window or where I'm going to put in my window. I just know I want a window because I saw the ruler that um, moved and I saw the opportunity to make a window. And I'm just making windows at this point. I don't know what I'm going to do next with the window. I don't know. Um, I'm really... Flying, I'm like, okay, I have to make a window. I made another window, so I'm gonna make another window. And I, I'm stuck. I, in reality, I shouldn't have made this other window because you already have a window that's gonna move. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you have a window on the moving part, why am I gonna have a window on the base part? It made no sense to me afterwards, but the end will kind of be all right and be like, oh, okay, it didn't turn out so bad, but. <coughs> Excuse me, but if you think about it, why are you going to put a window on the base when you already have a window on your moving part? Any cool. Um, so because I have a um, the cardboard looking through, I'm putting a little bit of gold and I'm putting it messy so that it looks like it has a little bit of gold on the on the top part. I don't know if you guys can see it, so it doesn't look like like a piece of plastic sticker or something like that so i'm deciding to make it a little messy gold paint all around the window so it looks gives me like a sort of like a frame around the window in a messy goldish kind of doohickey way after i was done painting i decided to really start doing it this time <laughs> like this time for real for real for real so now that I have my frame of the frame, I can attach 
uh, that and then I can attach the rest of the moving parts. Um, I feel bad sometimes for not really knowing what I'm doing when I'm recording um, because it looks like, you know, I have to do a lot of editing so it looks coherent, but in reality, if I didn't, it would look like, what is she doing? Like, is she lost or something? But that's because my my way of, of making things, I don't know if it happens to you guys or it's just as me, I have to make a lot of mistakes, a lot of, oh, no, I didn't like this, I didn't like that, before I make something that I like, um, before I'm happy. And, and if you think about it, at the end of the day, you have a bunch of mistakes that kind of go together. <laughs> Do you guys know what I mean? Like, okay, oh, that I did that. Oh, that happened. Oh, okay. Like, see, I didn't mean to have two windows, but now I have two windows. And, like, I didn't mean it to happen. But at the end, I kind of was like, oh, okay, I'm glad that kind of happened. So it was just an accident after accident. And so I feel like, I don't know if that's my life, happy accidents after happy accident. But um, this is this is how this one went. And so here you guys see how I do the fasteners, and I bend them. And because these are so long, I got them for $0.10 cents at a discount store. I got a box of like, I don't know, 300 bucks, 300 of these pieces for like 10 cents. I had like, I got three boxes, three boxes because that's all they had. And I was, I was hoping they, I even asked if they had more in the bag and they didn't, but you'll probably see me using these a lot. <laughs> Next few projects. <laughs> Anywho, um, I, what I did is I brought it all the way around because if I did it the opposite way where it went like long ways. I feel like with the movement, it would eventually catch on, and then I would lose that piece, or I'd get some damage going on. So what I did is I brought it all the way around, and I kind of tucked it under the the headpiece, and so um, I would it would have more. It it looks like it's binded that way. At the end, it was like I said, it was an accident when I brought it around. I noticed that I could just tuck it because I didn't want to flying end piece and it kind of looked all right so um in order for these not to be flying off all the time i don't know if i show this i forgot my editing diana from my voiceover diana but i think i put a tape one of those heavy industrial tapes um on on top of those bottom head the bottom tails of the paper fasteners um before i actually glue it together so i glue this down and I keep on putting it right there because this toothpaste paint kind of thing keeps on like dropping it. And I'm like, I didn't know how to control it. I don't know if I'll ever use that glue again. But my husband brought it over. It looked cool. It makes it flammable. So I figured it was like super, super awesome and like hard. And like, I don't know. I felt like it was going to be awesome. But it really isn't. It's it's. It's probably just as strong as the other one that I use. Um, and this is doing that calculation that I do with plaster and paint and glue. So I, it's kind of, you know, like I said, it's kind of like a gesso. But I like that I can make it as thick as I want. So instead of me using gesso all the time, I like to put, I have the little jar of plaster of Paris on my table all the time and I just mix it and I and you know I use it in a lot of my paints because I'll use it in paint sometimes just to make the paint dull or just to make the paint thicker or to add texture to some of my paints so I just have that little jar by my side once I gave it some color because if you guys were noticing I have browns and the same kind of tones so I wanted to bring this white out white out <laughs> that's funny. Um, I wanted to bring the white in to the um, piece so that something would stand out a little bit. So I felt like these holes where the spiral went was were looking a little too good. So I went ahead and um, kind of like tore them up, messed them up, made them look like, you know, they were used. She didn't use all of the book, but she's she's one of those teenagers that takes care of her stuff. And so I didn't really have a rough book. So I wanted to roughen it up, tore it up. 
And then what I did is, um, because it's very chick, I mean, thick chipboard, I didn't want it to look like I just went along and cut it. So what I did is I cut the pieces off and then tore some of them off. My next step was to, in a way, bring the that edge out a little bit. And my thought is like a tab. And I had a, a piece of leather um, from another project that I'm working on, which will probably be next video. But you guys know I buy old leather jackets and I cut them up. And so this is a piece of, from that jacket. And um, I used it as a tab for the outside of my, what is it called, journal? Junk journal, junkie, I don't know, one of those. So I decided what my window was going to be, and I'm using it to be a birdcage. So the birdcage is going to be attached on top of the acetate. So when I move the top part, it's going to move with, the, the cage is going to move with that part. Um, so what I'm doing is I have this, um, what is it called, like stick with wire, and I bought it at, at Michael's, and it's that wire that you, that is sold to make wreaths out of, so like, um, so you can uh, tie in your flowers or whatever it is you're making your wreath with, so that's the wire, they sell, they sold that in different colors, and I have, I think I have, the, it came in black, gold, and I think green, and I bought the gold and the black, so I have a, it's very easy wire. I mean, it's wired that may easily bends and stuff. So um, I think that's why I like using it because it's strong, but it also, you can also shape it really easily. So I'm going to do um, my top, what is it called? Top to bottom layers. But as you guys can see, it's kind of like a U, but then I fold out the tip so that it goes under the cardboard and you only see the front part of it. Um, I think the video explains more than what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Just do it, what I'm doing. Um, and so, um, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how many is too many and how little is too little, but I feel like I want it just to resemble that there was a cage. I feel like maybe if I had more time and I wasn't so, um, busy in life, I guess, that's what you call it. You can actually grab those pliers that have like the little nose pliers and make kind of designs with that wire, make it more like one of those um, old vintage bird cages where they have like um, very nice and really ornate kind of like um, wires and stuff like that. I feel like that would have looked really nice or um, or maybe you rusted it, like grab these little pieces and sand them off a little bit and, you know, put them in water or painted them or kind of rusted them a little bit. I mean, there's so many other things I could have done to add on to this. But, um, you know, it's, these are ideas that I can give you um, afterwards, I guess, you know, because I'm thinking about them as I'm editing. You know, I'm thinking about them in the future. This is future Diana speaking. So... <laughs> So, um, yeah, so this is, I mean, I'm sure the cage is pretty self-explanatory. It's kind of like a tic-tac-toe, but, you know, sometimes you add more lines up and down or sideways. And so um, I, I added, I think it was four um, wires up uh, sideways. And I'm doing, I'm going to end up doing three wires upside down. But on the upside down ones, I'm going to have them all connect to the center parts, like the center points of it. And I'm going to do the center of the wires is going to go on the bottom of all four sideways um, uh, layers. And then the top two on the sides, they go on the outer side of the layer. So it kind of gives it a little friction. And they kind of unite on the center, on the top, and on the bottom, just so it really gives it more of a cage kind of feel. Anyway, so I'm about to do the, the center. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use a little piece of leather to make the binding of the three pieces together. But in order for me to do that, just because this, like, 
black thing is a little plasticky and I want to make sure it ends on well. I'm going to cross hatch a pattern there so that the glue has something to attach on and it doesn't uh, come off because sometimes even when it even if it's a really strong glue because the fabric I mean the place where you put the glue on is kind of like plasticky or resistant to to you know sometimes they make books to resist stain look at me I put my hand right on my birdcage anyways so because sometimes books are made to resist stains or to be weatherproof and stuff like that they're they have these plastic waxy kind of covers so I just want to make sure that it bonds because you want to be able to use the journals and so by cross hatching it it allows it, it tells the glue to go inside those crevices and by doing that then you're sure you're sure you're assuring that the glue is going to stay there and therefore your piece is going to stay strong and bonded really well and this is also a piece of that jacket that I um, used previously on my tab but I've been using this leather jacket for a few projects if you guys remember this jacket I have a couple jackets that you know and I get them for like a dollar or two I, if, if I don't get them for a dollar or two then I won't get them you know but I see them all the time you guys know that I I go my husband and I go on a date on the weekends and our date is going junking he likes to junk he junks for different stuff than I do uh, but we both like to do vintage. Um, he he's a he's the one that cooks for our family, so he likes to decorate the kitchen with vintage stuff. And he likes to de um he's the one that likes to buy vintage tools because uh, we have a wood shop kind of thing. And he likes to buy old saws. He just recently bought this. I don't know what is it called. Uh, woods. It's it kind of like um I don't. I don't remember the name and I'll show it to you next week but I forgot the name of it anyways he just likes to buy old stuff too as well anyway so I use this piece of leather to for the binding of the center piece after I'm atta done attaching the outside I go to the inside and what I do is I use I just simply use craft paper but because I have that hole in the center of my spine I um. I went ahead and cut it out from inside and you guys will see I cut it out from the outside but I wanted to use uh, put the, the inside of the cover I mean do this first before I glue the I bring around the, the leather just because I'm learning that you gotta breathe between steps because otherwise you you go back and you're like oh, I wish I would have done this I wish I would have done that like the gluing of the window do you see what I mean Windows more enlightening than you think. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so, I'm I. What I did is I. I'm also using that leather to kind of frame that um, that center hole. And you guys know that I use this binding technique all the time. This is kind of like I think I'm calling it my loop looping um, wire technique before because I've done this technique with wire um, to for binding on the on the sheets um, but in this case I'm gonna use something else you guys will see um, but I'm using the same leather to kind of reinforce the the hole or not hole window yeah window I like window better to reinforce the window and to kind of cover that um, cardboard chipboard thing that I cut out and that you could see there and it, you know it looks cute that I kind of bring it inside I feel like if I would have just left it out or cut it out it would look like I gotta paint it and stuff like that and it wouldn't look as cute I, li I like how the the leather looked come bring it inside and kind of peeking in you know um, I feel like it, it um, merges both situations in and out you guys will see that on the side where I did my window, I put a piece of, um, I don't know, it's not a piece, it's a slice of tree. And um, so that when I'm pressing things down, I'm not pressing down on my cage because although it's wire and, um, and it's kind of like a, not so thin, I guess it is, yes it is, it's pretty thin wire, but I don't want to press down on, on, on the thing so hard. I mean, I, I put glue on the edges. So that it wouldn't move and that same pressure would kind of keep its shape 
but you know I'm pressing down because I'm gluing hard and so I don't want it to come off and I'm using that piece of wood so that it allows me to work comfortably and I can press down on my piece my cover hard you know my next step is to make uh, the holes where I want the um, um, the support for my signatures and because I don't have that I'm gonna have to use my root my um, drill so but before I do that I have to mark see I was already gonna drill holes without marking and so you know the rule measure twice cut once in this case measure twice drill once because I have a piece of leather and if I don't measure it um, it, ugh, it gets ugly and I'm not gonna about to take this whole thing apart just because I made a mistake. Anyway, so the way I do these is usually I go three feet, three inches up and three inches down or or whatever it is. And then I don't worry about measuring the center because I don't care. <laughs> you know, as long as it's symmetrical from the top to the bottom to the center and from the bottom towards the center, then I think it, everything will be symmetrical. I don't have to worry about measuring from point to point. I just have to figure out that the holes are where I need them to go. Anyways, so have you? If you ever have tried to uh, drill leather, you will know that it's not possible to drill leather. So after I mark my holes, I cut with my exacto knife the a little place where I can put the drill bit and make the hole without um, pulling on the or tugging on the leather. So after that, I'm I'm going to use the regular um, eyelids um, but because the, I don't have this so where it looks nice on both sides I'm going to do a trick that I haven't shared with you guys and I don't know if I don't know if you guys know about it but it's a the, the little rivet thing the eyelid um, I put double so I'll put one inside and one outside and sometimes I can just do them both together and then um, hammer them in and then it'll be done but there's an if sometimes for some reason they bump into each other what I um I'm going to show you guys a little trick that allows you to use a little eyelid on both ends so that um it looks nice on both ends because sometimes both ends want to look you want both ends to look nice so with my little hammer you you kind of hammer them in but and then with my little pliers on the tip, you want to go in there and kind of make sure that none of the little inside is flying off. See, on this end, on this one, you can tell that it didn't want to go in, and on the other one, it went in fine. So what I do is I'll squeeze in evenly on, the, on one of the eyelids um, very, very carefully because they're kind of a little fragile so I'll squeeze on one so that it goes one inside the other and when you hammer them in together it kind of opens up and then with the pliers I'm able to make sure that um, there's no like little flying um, what is it called um, pieces of of any of the little um, eyelids so after I hammer all of them you can see that it looks it looks pretty nice how huh? You can use a little eyelet on both ends on the side and on the on the inside and on the outside. After I'm done uh, reassuring the eyelids or making sure that it's clean um, closure, I go back with black paint, uh, acrylic paint. This is just regular acrylic paint. And I try to cover up a little bit of that uh, cardboard chipboard that you can see coming in through the... Um, through the what is it called the sides of the um, ripping that I did and with the black I also kind of brush in the little tab so it looks like it's not just sticking out like a sword thumb. Um, sore thumb anyways these hooks they are I don't know they're probably used to hang stuff but they're a uh, hook screw eyes hook and they are they come in a pack of 10 well these are the ones that I, I um, and the tip comes with a little like self tapping screw kind of tip and uh, like a pointy tip. So what I did is I used these as uh, the, the, the kind of like what holds my, my signature together. And at the same time, I'm going to use that hook or the eye 
to hold it, hold that signature to my book. Sort of like the wire wind, wire binding that I do in, um, in other videos. But in this case, I'm going to use these um, screw on um, kind of technique. I feel like it was fun. It's going to be fun. And I have honestly got these hooks for like a dollar at the, at the Home Depot. And um, you can, you can, and they're going to be very durable. And the way I'm going to seal the, the tip of it is, um, well, there's probably a different, a million ways to, to do it, but I'm going to show you guys how I did two of them. In, in the first one, I just grab a piece of, um, what is it called? The file folders. And I'm just going to straight out glue it. I, you know, I like to have the flexibility of moving signatures in and out, especially when I want to add or I want to take away sometimes when I make them too fat. But in this case, I did very little bit of, of um, what I'm starting to do is I make more signatures with less paper. Do you guys know what I mean? Like I'll have this signature has like, I think three pieces of paper. So six pages um, in a in, per page or 12 pages front and back. Uh, so it gives me the flexibility of taking the whole signature out without having to take the signature apart. But, and I, I, because I have that exposed pine spine, and I, I, I like to see more signatures. You know what I mean? So it looks more patterny. I don't know what I would call it. But I like how you can see, I don't know, maybe 10 signatures or I don't know, something something fun like that. So um, I had that envisioned. So I, in this case, I did three. But I think I'm going to add more signatures. And I've also seen on Pinterest that sometimes people use um, what are they called? clothespins. So I, saw, I have some of those Tim Holtz clothespins that I um, had in my stash. And I grabbed uh, two of them. And I also used them to to grab two of my uh, one of my signatures just so that it looks funky like something stands out so one of the signature has a those so I'm going to use that as my center and because I wanted to line up with my other hooks I'm going to tie it up uh, I'm going to be I'm going to I'm going to use this middle signature as my anchor and if you was uh, curious about how I dyed that black and white one I have a um, a technique video on how I did that double dipping on that paper, that black paper. If you're interested, I'll link it on the description box and if I can give you a card right above. Right now, I will. And so, I grabbed it with a little bit of twine and then, <coughs> excuse me, so what I did is I put it through the hole inwards on both, um, all the way across and on the in inwards also on the hole on the front and on the back so it kind of looks it, it, the the string will kind of go across on um, from the outside and that's all you'll see from the outside um, and then what I did is I grabbed the I grabbed the string and I tied it inside but as a professional that I am I did it off camera <laughs> and um, so now you'll see but see you have used to have some kind of flexibility on your signature they can bring it out. In this center one, what I did is I did um, like a little folder and that the tip of that, um, those hooks goes into that folder. So it serves as a function, but in this case, you could probably unscrew it because I use that thick glue. So you can probably unscrew it from that thick file folder pocket thing that I did. And I did a file folder on one side and on the other. Anyways, because I didn't know what to make the window of, because I made double windows, um, I went ahead and did a little notebook inside. So like a little, I don't know, note take thingy, majingy. And so, I mean, I feel like it had to have something in there um, because most of the what's happening is on the outside and it has that birdcage. So I just did a little long notebook or note. Yeah, little notebook, and then and this is this is paper that was left over from the signature, the paper that I used for the signature. It has those um, lines or whatever. Anywho, I'm blabbering. So, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for um, subscribing to my channel. I hope um, I'm 
able to contribute somewhat to to the junk journal world and um, at least to your day if all my mistakes don't make you laugh um, thank you guys for watching thank you for your comments your your thumbs up they really encourage me they they support my channel too they help um, let other people know that I'm here uh, if you like this this video and um, you're looking forward to more ideas please consider subscribing to this channel if you're not already uh, subscribe um, and I appreciate you guys all of you I appreciate all of you guys thank you so much and have a good day bye bye